If I had to choose just one thing that helped us to scale to eight figures, it would probably be this process I'm about to show you. It took us over three years and dozens of iterations. So I can safely say that this works. It is fairly simple, but most sellers won't do this. Well, most people won't even watch this full video, so... Let's dive in and let me show you the full process. So this process is based on this simple sentence, consistent action in the right direction. We will split this sentence into two parts. We have the consistent action and then the right direction. The right direction matters more, but let's start with consistent action and let me explain what it means and how to think about this. I talked about this framework before, but basically our days and our schedule should be split into two sections. We either work as a manager or as a maker. The managers are making decisions, they are managing people and systems. Those are tasks that are usually just maintaining the business. And then we have the maker. The maker creates value and removes bottlenecks, usually focusing on the growth of the business. So your daily schedule can look like this. We can book the mornings for our maker sessions where we work and try to grow the business. And in the afternoon, we can work as a manager to manage the team, make decisions, and essentially do everything we can to maintain the business, to keep it running. And the key here is that we want to protect our maker session so we can then make predictable progress. And it also helps us to manage our expectations because if we know that we are going to work just two hours per day as a maker, we have around 10 hours per week. And that's really important to understand when we make plans. So let me give you a quick example. Let's say it's the beginning of the year and we analyzed our opportunities and now we have a growth plan. We know what we want to achieve this year. So let's say we have an Amazon seller and he did around 800,000 in revenue last year and it is just him and his general VA. And this year he wants to grow to 1.3 million, around 500,000 increase. And he is smart. He keeps it simple and he really plans to win. So he has a very straightforward plan. He wants to launch six products and he wants to expand to Europe. And the problem is that this is where most people stop with their planning. They have their plan for the year that they want to launch six products and they want to expand to Europe, but this is not really direction. If we want to talk about direction, we need to talk about roadmap. We need a roadmap. We want to understand the logical sequence of these steps and really what we need to do to achieve this. Because if we really look at the plan to launch six products, we can say that we want to launch one product every two months. But that may not be the case, right? We need to see a roadmap considering all of our bottlenecks and all of our constraints. And if we analyze bottlenecks, we will understand the constraints. Maybe it's our time, maybe it's our skill set, maybe it's our process, or maybe it's the labor, or maybe it's all of this combined. So if we look at our goal to launch six products this year, and we know that we have around two hours per day as a maker, we probably don't have enough time to develop these six products that year. But we can say that we do have the skill set. We already have a business that is doing high six figures. So yes, we absolutely have the skill set. But in this example, let's say the seller, he doesn't have a well-defined process. He's just developing the products as he goes, but there is no system in place. And he doesn't have a labor. He has a general VA, that VA is helping him with various tasks, but we cannot really say that there is anyone who could take over the full process. And what about the other goal, expanding to Europe? Once again, that will take a lot of time. We have to move all of our processes, such as supply chain, product development, operations, all of that has to move to Europe, right? So we essentially have to duplicate all of our existing processes and get registrations for VAT, understand all the compliance, so that will take a lot of time. And as a maker, two hours per day, probably not enough. So we do not really have the time to fully focus on this project. But as I said, we will be duplicating most of our processes, the supply chain, the product development pipeline, pretty much everything. So we do have the skill sets in place because we did this in the US marketplace. So we will just replicate that in Europe. But we do not have the process, as I said. In this example, the seller does not have a process. He's just doing everything as he goes. And once again, he doesn't have any labor who could do this for him. So to get a clear idea about the roadmap, we have to find the first domino. 
And in this simple example, we want to launch more products. And in order to launch more products effectively, we should have a routine and some system in place. And ideally, we should have someone who could do most of the work, like populating listing, communicating to our photographers, graphic designers, and all of that. So the first domino here in this example will be a brand manager. But as I said, this is just an example. In your case, it might be different because the circumstances are different. But the idea is simple. We want to launch more products, but we do not have enough time. We do not have enough time because we do not have a proper system in place that would maximize our efficiency. And to have a system that would maximize our efficiency, we would also need a brand manager that would operate within the system. So now we can update our strategic projects. As we said, we want to launch six products and we want to expand to Europe. But as we analyze the dominoes, we can see that we also have to hire a brand manager and we should also develop a product pipeline. This pipeline will help us to keep track of all of the accountability, all of the moving parts and pretty much everything. It will define how we work hand in hand with the brand manager. So now let me show you what a business plan document and a roadmap could look like. As you can see, the business plan should be very simple. We have our primary goals. As I said, we want to re reach 1.3 million in revenue. That's around 65 to 70% year on year growth. We want to maintain margins around 22% or higher, ideally. And these are our strategic projects, right? Our big focus areas to achieve our goals. And as we said, we want to launch six products and expand to Europe. But since we did the analysis, we looked at our constraints and our bottlenecks, we now understand that in order to achieve this, we have to do more than that. So the first step will be hiring a brand manager. The second step will be to develop a product pipeline. And also once we expand to Europe and we start launching products in Europe, we will probably have to update our process, right? Because we will develop this process to launch our six products in the US. But since we are expanding to Europe, we will probably need to make some adjustments to our product pipeline. So now we have our strategic projects in a logical sequence. So we can say that this is a roadmap, but we will take a closer look at this. But before we do that, I also like to summarize the challenges ahead, because this is a simple one page business plan that I highly recommend you to first of all create and then print and put it on your notice board so you can really see this and you can take off the tasks as you go. So the challenges, the dangers ahead, it usually should be something that is outside of your control, what should really, something that you should be really aware of. So with your current existing operations, let's say that our business is a seasonal business. So ideally we should build processes and develop products in Q2 and Q3, so we can then crush Q4. And our current operations, the challenge, the danger ahead is, let's say, delayed Q4 POs, and shipping, that's probably the biggest danger ahead that could harm our current operations. And in our growth projects, which are these, let's say that the probably the biggest challenge and the danger ahead is delayed VAT registration because that is outside of our control. And this means that we should really be aware of these once we create the final roadmap. Because ideally, we account for all of these dangers and challenges. Now we are finally ready to create a proper roadmap. So as I said, our primary goals are here. We want to grow by around $500,000 in revenue. We can, I like to put notes here that let's say I want to work less than 25 hours per week and I want to disconnect for three weeks in October just to have some rough idea and plan around it. So as I said before, the biggest mistake people usually make is that they look at their strategic projects. I want to launch six products and I want to expand to Europe. And when they plan their year, they would say, okay, I need to launch one product every two months. So I will be doing this throughout the whole year. But as I said, this is not a good approach. First of all, we said that our business is quite seasonal. So ideally we launch all of our products before Q4 so we can then get all of the boost in sales in Q4 with all of our products. So once again, ideally we would launch all of these six products by the end of September. And we have to account for all of the other projects I mentioned, hiring the brand manager, developing the process, adjusting the process, and so on. So once we do that, it may look something like this. The first step will be to hire our brand manager. And we have around two months to do that with our estimates. We will do the hiring process, we will develop our hiring funnel, and then some proper 
onboarding, right? Since we will hire our brand manager first, that will unlock all of the other projects. We will be able to develop products more efficiently and we will be able to develop our product pipeline. So once the brand manager is fully onboarded, our product development can be a routine. It, we can really turn that into a well-oiled machine. So in this example, the first step, hiring brand manager, and then together with the brand manager, we develop our product pipeline. Once we do that, we can start our product development. So we want to launch our six products. And as you can see in this example, we are not launching one product every two months. The first three months, we are all about brand manager developing the process. So then we will achieve maximum efficiency and we can launch one product per month starting from April. And as you can see, we will launch our last product by the end of September. So we will get all of the increase in sales in Q4 with all of the six products, right? So this strategy is way better than launching one product every two months as we initially wanted to. And we also know from our challenges that the VAT registration can take a lot of time. So ideally we want to start our VAT registrations as soon as possible. So we will start the expansion process here. And once again, our goal, since our business is seasonal, should be to launch all of the products in Europe we want to launch that year before Q4. So we basically have a research phase where we figure out what needs to be done, all of the compliance, establishing new supply chain, talking to forwarders, getting our 3PLs in place, and basically place our POs and then launch ideally somewhere around September. And as I said, our business is very seasonal. So we want to have a lot of capacity in Q4. So as you can see, I'm not scheduling any growth projects in Q4. We want to have all the time to properly plan our stock, do proper marketing, and basically pay our full attention to sales in Q4. And this plan really allows us to do that. It accounts for all of the bottlenecks, all of our projects, and all of the challenges ahead. So you should keep in mind that your business runs a marathon while you run sprints. So the actual planning will look like this. We now have our yearly plan, and from the yearly plan, we will create our sprint plans. From sprint plans, we will create our weekly plans, and from those, we will have our daily plans. So let me show you this in detail. So within a year, we have multiple sprints. Within a sprint, we have multiple weeks. Within a week, we have multiple days. But once again, we are going back to our previous point that our workday is around two hours as a maker. So if the year has five to seven sprints, one sprint is three to 10 weeks, and one week is around five workdays, we can really calculate how much time do we actually have to pursue all of these projects. And this should really create a sense of urgency because there is not that much time to grow the business. So if you miss one maker session per week, you basically lose 20% of your productive time for that week. Now let's talk about the sprint plans in more detail. The sprint plan is essentially a strategic project action plan. It consists of an objective, milestones, deadline, and the desired outcome. And really, if you have some accountability partner, this is a perfect document to review and discuss with your mentor or your accountability group. So let me show you the sprint plan document in detail. Once again, a very simple document that I highly recommend you to print and put right next to your business plan. But in this sprint plan, we have the objective, as I said, and our first strategic project was to hire and onboard a brand manager. Then we have the tasks. We will probably prepare some hiring list. We will post the job ad. We will filter the candidates and then we will onboard. And we can set a deadline according to our roadmap. And as if you can remember, the 1st of March, was the deadline, right? So the deadline is clear and the desired outcome is clear as well. We want our brand manager fully onboarded, taking full ownership of our product pipeline. So once again, a very simple document that clearly shows us the steps we need to take in order to achieve the desired outcome. So as you can see, we are getting from the big picture, from the yearly plan, all the way down to specific tasks. And this is extremely important if you want to make progress consistently, if you want to move the needle every single day. So in our sprint plan, we have no operational routines. There are no tasks for the manager. These are just the tasks for the maker, just projects that build or grow our business. So you don't have a sprint plan to optimize your PPC campaigns. 
You have a sprint plan to hire a brand manager. You have a sprint plan to develop your product pipeline. And the key here is that once the plan is created, it becomes your priority. So once you have the plan, do not get distracted. No more planning, no more brainstorming. You have a sprint plan in place and you will do what you can to finish all of the tasks before you get to the deadline. And from the sprint plan, we create our weekly plans, which is essentially a list of milestones from our sprint plan we want to accomplish, but we also need to consider our routines and obligations. Those are our manager sessions, right? PPC optimizations, supply, and stuff like that. So we really have to consider the operations so we can then plan accordingly. And our daily plan is essentially a to-do list where we include everything we want to accomplish that day. And the one thing for the day, for the maker session, should be to achieve milestones from our weekly plan. So let me show you this in detail. So we have our yearly plan where we have four strategic projects. Each strategic project has milestones. That is our sprint plan. Those are the tasks from the sprint plan, right? So the strategic project leads into a sprint plan, the milestones from the sprint plan leads into our weekly plan, and the steps from the weekly plan leads to our daily plans. So really, the full process looks like this. In our yearly plan, one of our strategic projects is to hire a brand manager. So we have a sprint plan to prepare hiring list, filter candidates, choose the best candidate and onboard them. But to create our weekly plan, we want to prepare the hiring list. So in our weekly plan, we want to define the role, draft a job ad, prepare a questionnaire. That's the plan for the specific week. And once again, we are taking the step and putting it in our daily plan for the next day. That is our one thing we want to achieve that day in our maker session to define that role. The day after that, we will ideally draft a job ad and so on and so on. And as you can see in our daily plan, we also account for our routines. Let's say that that day we need to optimize our PPC campaigns. We want to determine order quantity uh, for our established products and so on. But the key here is that we always look only one level up when we make plans. So you do not need to review your yearly plan every time you plan your day. And you create a new plan only once you finish your current one. So once I finish my daily plan, I look at my weekly plan so I can plan the next day. And if I finish my week, I look at my sprint plan, what's next. And once I finish my sprint plan, I look at my yearly plan so then I can prepare the next sprint plan. Very simple. So as I said, the key here is consistent action in the right direction every single day. It is crucial to have a proper business plan in place. But after all, products are what drives the growth of our business. If you want to see a full breakdown of the strategy I use to develop multiple Amazon bestsellers, make sure to check out this video. See you next week. Bye.